George Osborne's dreaming up figures to play politics. The economy is growing. It's not about the deficit. It's not about the economy itself. It's all about him ideologically wanting to shrink the state and put pressure on Labour. He could abolish job seekers' allowance, the carers' allowance, maternity pay, and he wouldn't get anywhere near £25 billion. Most of those cuts, if he ever imposes them, will affect people in work. It's not people who are unemployed. It's people who get up and go to work, often when he's still in bed. Fraser Nelson, that's true, isn't it? Even if you accept that you have to get public spending back under control, mm. a lot of people on low incomes are going to be badly affected with the sort of thing George Osborne's planning. I don't think so. I think it was a lot more fat to cut out of the machine. I mean, Osborne still isn't coming anywhere near 25 billion, and Kevin's right. He's, he's making it up, but he's exaggerating. If you look at his budget figures, they said only £6 billion pounds is going to be shaved off between now and in five years' time. That's 1.1% of government spending is going to be shaved over the next five years. So this is George Osborne's trick. He's talking a lot tougher than he's actually doing. We still have got a massive debt problem in this country that is not being properly addressed by Osborne on current schools. So yeah. you would like him to go further and, and announce further spending cuts? Absolutely. There are far more savings you can be found because when you do that, the economy moves faster and the country gets back in its feet. He's taking far too long to get us out of this crisis of government spending. I mean, Kevin Maguire, also huge areas of public spending are being ring-fenced and protected from any further cuts, pensions being the most obvious yeah. thing that was announced yesterday. Do you think that is a wise move? Yeah, pensions, the NHS. But George Osborne knows these are areas he would have a revolt of, uh, of the electorate. He knows a lot of Tory supporters would come and kick him. So he keeps trying to scapegoat people. He invents myths. He has this idea lots of people are work shy, they're not getting up to go to work, when in fact these cuts are hurting people who do work because he's uh, been freezing and cutting things like child benefit and also tax credits. It actually hurts. It's one of the reasons living standards are falling is because George Osborne is cutting them. Fraser Nelson, also George Osborne is ruling out any idea of tax rises to try and balance the books after the election. I mean, whatever happened to we're all in this together? Well, we're pretty much taxed to death as a country. Taxes anymore, and you really will hit growth. He's pointing out that the government has grown way out of all proportion to its usefulness. Gordon Brown increased the size of his government by 60%. George Osborne is talking about cutting it by 3%. Now, really, when you look at the two, you still see that we've got a government over there far bigger than it needs to be, and it's a single biggest um, problem for cost of living is the cost of government. But it's not too big if you use the NHS, if your kids go to state schools, if you're a, or a pensioner, you want to use public transport, you rely on the police and law and order. It's not too big then. Final question to you both. Who do you think the public is going to respond to? Which message are they going to like? George Osborne's of further austerity or maybe someone else who says, look, it doesn't have to be this bad. Kevin Maguire. I think George Osborne's pushing austerity too far and there will be a revolt because people do value public services and they also value fairness and they're worried about the money in their own pockets. The polls show Osborne is winning this argument. People realise government spending is out of control. If only Osborne would deliver what he's talking about, I'd be a lot happier.